Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com, and this is your You are doing excellent photo news fix. This fix is not brought to you by anyone because this time around I'm using this plug spot to help a fellow photographer who needs our help. Our good friend Jaleel King, who's been in a wheelchair since he was a kid, unfortunately blew a tire on his van, which caused enough damage that the insurance company decided to total it. Now this has left Jaleel without any transportation, and I'm here to ask for any support that you might be able to give so we can help Jaleel raise enough funds to purchase a van that actually has some modifications to make his life easier. His old van was just a van with no modifications for someone who's in a wheelchair. Jaleel had to hop into the passenger seat, drag his chair through the open sliding door in the back, then hop across the abyss to get to the driver's seat where he then had these different pedals that weren't even the official handicap pedals for driving in a van. So if you'd like to donate to help Jaleel get a new van, head on over to bit.ly slash help Jaleel. Also, if you know anyone who owns a car dealership or who might be able to help in any way, please email me directly at jared at fronosphoto.com. First up, if you like to get high off of Instagram likes, you may need to find a new drug very soon. Can I recommend the gym, Dan? Is that a drug? No. According to Instagram CEO Adam Masseri, they will start testing hiding likes in the United States in the next couple of weeks. Now back in May, out of nowhere, Instagram started hiding likes for users in, in Canada. Now one of the reasons they did this is because likes are worth 2.7 times less than in the United States because Canadians are so damn nice and like everything, even shitty photos like this one. So what will you see on your photos instead of likes? Nothing! There will be no public facing likes, but you will be able to see how many likes your photo got on the back end. Instagram's thinking is this will put the focus back on photos, though I highly doubt that because I've seen some of the photos that get a lot of likes. Now I'm not sure how I feel about this. I personally use likes as a metric for our people paying attention. But on the flip side, I don't want someone liking something that sucks because everyone else is doing the same thing. Now what do you think? Are you Canadian? Are you offended? <laughs> you guys are dick. Next up, is Olympus getting ready to shut down their camera business? No. According to the website Photo Rumors, the answer might be yes. They claim that a shutdown might come in the next eight months. Now I don't know the inner workings of Olympus, but what I do know is they've been around for close to 100 years. Now, of course, being around for a long time doesn't always mean you will still be here tomorrow. Kodak. We all know my feelings on micro four thirds cameras, and if you didn't know my feelings, they are this. I don't like tiny sensors that start looking like Swiss cheese at 800 ISO. <laughs> the last Olympus camera I used was the OMD EM1X, and I loved its design. I also loved how it felt in the hands as well as the weather ceiling, but I hated the EVF and the image quality, especially when it's priced at $3,000 and a full frame A9, the original one, is only $500 more. Now, I don't know if Olympus is going to shut down in eight months, but I honestly can't see them selling enough consumer cameras to stick around much longer. Though it is possible that Sony could buy their tech, but maybe that all depends on what patents Olympus holds. Are you Canadian? Are you still offended? even after this story? Well, let me know down below. Speaking of going out of business, Nikon's back in the news for all the wrong reasons. There is no such thing as bad publicity. Their CEO has said its cameras need to justify their existence as a business. Meaning, if they don't start selling a lot of cameras and lenses, they might be going the way of likes on Instagram, which will surely upset more Canadians. Uh, you, buddy. Nikon CEO did an interview with Nikkei over the summer that said even though imaging profits had fallen to one sixth of its peak in 2012, he expected profits to hit $188.7 million in three years. Well, guess what? He was wrong. Nikon is now admitting they overestimated how much the Z system would bring in. Nikon's pointing the finger, in my opinion, at Canada. Hi, no, actually, I think it's pointing at everyone who's not sold their DSLRs in favor of going Nikon mirrorless, 
or it could be because everybody's already jumped ship to Sony, which means they're not buying Nikon. True that. The truth of the matter is they should be pointing the finger at whoever decided to go with one card slot, no vertical grip, and the person behind the knocked. True that. If Nikon wants to accelerate the jump to mirrorless, then offer a real deal trade-in programs like DSLRs for mirrorless bodies and lenses for lenses, or maybe something where they give you a huge amount back in trade if you trade in DSLRs for the Z system? Would that work for you and keep you shooting Nikon? And finally, in a story that didn't make it into the fix last week, Leica has announced the SL2 full frame mirrorless camera with a 47 megapixel full frame stabilized CMOS sensor and an ISO range of 50 to 50,000. Leica is saying there is virtually no shutter lag and can shoot at 10 frames a second with a mechanical shutter or up to 20 frames per second with the electronic one. In terms of video, the SL2 can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second and full HD up to 180 frames per second. On the back of the camera, you will find a new 5.76 megapixel iRes EVF which is probably made by Sony, and a 3.2 inch 2.1 megapixel touchscreen. That's probably not made by Sony? I have a question for Canadians. Can you guess what type of mount this camera has? That's right, it's part of the L-Mount Alliance, eh? Now I've not gotten my hands on this body just yet, but I definitely would like to give it the real world treatment. So someone from Leica, please contact me. Now if you think this camera's for you, it's going to cost you $3,500. Don't forget the Leica tax. That's right, Dan, I almost forgot to add the $2,500 Leica tax, bringing this body to $6,000 in the US or $8,000 in Canada or 8,000 loonies or 4,000 toonies. We're all a little loony. Will you be picking one up? And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around to check out the last fix. Go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Jared Polin, Froknowsphoto.com. See ya.